You know, when I, you, imagine what that must have been like. The bond, what, what are we going to be free from? We're going to be, the bondage of sin is going to be one day, the, the bondage of sin to be broken forever. Hallelujah. Sickness. Patty, what you're dealing with. Hallelujah. I have a hope in God. That's more than any MD. Hallelujah. Incorruption, mortality into immortality. All that is to happen is going to happen in the coming of Christ and much more. You know, we have the word as the supreme witness of his coming, don't we? Second Peter 1.19 says this. We have also a more sure word. A, now, now, that's not just thrown in there. Think about it. A more sure word. A certainty of the prophecy where unto you do well that you take heed. Church, Jesus is the fulfillment of all prophecy. Take heed. Take heed that you listen and be prepared. To, all right? Just before Jesus comes, I believe God will cause in believer's heart an excitement. An excitement. I'm going to tell you, listen. <laughs> Boy, you open your life. My heart, when, when Yvonne was thin back there, my heart was beating a thousand beats. But you know, over, over a marriage, sometimes your heart don't beat as fast. Don't look at me pious. Sometimes you have to work. But it says that our hearts, we're, I believe we're going to be at an excitement. I believe the day come, maybe the day will come, when instead of people lining up to go to uh, Walmart to buy something on the day after Thanksgiving or Christmas, they're going to line up to get something from God. And finally, I'll just, it's the hope of heaven. It's the hope of heaven. See, it's not just on this realm that we find that, but we find it is the hope of heaven. Neither can they do it. Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, bringing the children of the resurrection. Heaven itself is waiting for this glorious return, for this blessed hope. Heaven itself is waiting right now. Right now, heaven itself is waiting for when God the Father turns to God the Son, because he's the only one that knows the hour and the date and the time. Don't let all these other people tell you that they can tell you when he's coming back. Remember, they, they thought that the world was going to end back in December. They were wrong. But God knows. And when he tells his son Jesus to come back, let me tell you, heaven itself is going to begin to rejoice. Heaven itself is waiting for that blessed hope. It's the hope of creation. Even creation is waiting. Creation, by that I mean this earth, it says, groans under the weight of sin. You know, because of man's sin, it brought not only ramifications upon us as man, but it brought ramifications upon this creation called earth. Even, even the earth cries out and groans for the weight of the sin and for the return of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 And finally, it's a blessed hope. I think it's number five, Rachel. It's a blessed hope. Blessed. This blessed hope should bring joy to the heart of all who believe. How many of you today, without embarrassing this one too, how many, today, how many of you are believers today? How many of you are believers today? Are you believers because you got everything you ever wanted in life? Are you believers because you haven't had to deal with stuff? No. You're a believer because you put your faith in an almighty God. Nothing else. Hallelujah. Which is why ours is not just any hope, but a blessed hope. A sure and steadfast hope. It steadies the heart despite trying times and difficult circ circumstances. It's a hope that inspires to service with zeal and passion. It turns men into dreamers and star glazer, uh, uh, glazers. Gazers. I got glazers. <laughs> I got to throw something in there just to keep you guys. It gives Jim back there. Jim just laughs. I know he does. I He's laughing with me, not at me, but he's like, stargazers. You know, when you lose your hope, you no longer dream and you no longer look at the stars. And finally, it's the only hope of victory. It's the only hope of victory. There's the only hope of victory. It's the only hope of victory. There is no other way to have victory in Jesus. We sang at Jerry's funeral, uh, homecoming. 
Victory in Jesus. Not only was it a victory for Jerry, but it was a victory for Jesus. And it's a victory for all who believe this blessed hope. Hey, I'm going to walk out of here tomorrow, today. And I don't know if I'll be back tomorrow. You say, well, wait a minute, are you quitting? No, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know the one who holds my tomorrow. That's my blessed hope. Things may fall apart. I may lose all my hair. What an ugly sight that would be. I had to go get new eyeglasses. I got, these are old. Where do they send me? What kind of style of glasses do I have to get? Fathead. Where's hope in that? I'm born with a portly body and I got to go get glasses for a fathead. But you know where my self-worth and my value is? I'm a creation of Jesus Christ. I'm the son of a king. And, and instead of walking around like I'm the worst person on earth and all is lost, hallelujah, all is not lost, hallelujah, I'm not the worst of the worst, I'm the best of his creation, hallelujah, I'm not the, I'm not the borrow, I can be a lender, I'm not going to eat off the scraps, I'm going to eat the first fruit, hallelujah, I am, I am the son of a king. Royalty flows through me. I can walk through things, I can jump through things, I have the attitude and mind of Christ that no matter what the situation is, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. It's a victory. It's a victory. Well, are you saying we got to wait till Jesus? No, I'm saying experience that victory now. Just build it up in crescendo. What a glorious day. And a blessed hope we have in Christ and his second coming. Hallelujah. With all that said, until Christ comes, bringing the victory. And let me just say, not any just victory, but the final victory. And in that victory, he's going to bring down Satan. He's going to bring down his cohorts. He's going to bring down sin and death. He's going to bring down that triple trio. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All he has to do is speak the word. And we have eternity. Praise God. So I say this to you this morning. All the more reason to look up. Look up. Look up. You know, if all you do is ever look down, chances are you're going to trip over something. You're going to run into something. Are you going to miss something? How you know, by looking up, you see it all. Let's let God be that eagle today in your life, just like yesterday. Let you know he's outside, just very close. He's our blessed hope. Well, for those who heard this message before, it's the second time. I'm not going to rate it. I gave it. I really felt with all that happened with Jerry this week and all of our prayers, that sometimes we get a tendency to feel like God didn't answer our prayers. And for some of you that have been struggling for a long time, it's the, it's the doubt discouragement not just in God but in others as well that you have to fight that others aren't stepping up as well but let me tell you what you can't live off my hope I can't live off your hope but together we can put our hope together in Jesus Christ and we can see mighty things happen by this time next year there's no doubt in my mind I'm gonna believe no matter what we're gonna see this place popping happening jumping might even have a second service because we got just, it, just need to have a second service. Oh, come on, Pastor. Uh oh. Where's our blessed hope? It's, uh, it's time now for communion. Uh, so we're going to do things a little different this day for communion. Instead of the ushers coming and serving you, we're just going to have you come and come and gather both the cup and the bread. And uh, ask that this morning, as we come, hey, what, what better way of remembering that blessed hope and all that God has done for us than in not in the receiving of communion, in the receiving of that cup that represents the blood that was shed, the blood that was poured out, and in the wafer, or in, our, in the wafer that represents that broken body, that that which was broken can be made whole again. Where's our hope found? What better way to signify than to signify it in the act of communion? Ushers are going to come. For those of you visiting today, I know some of you probably might have to leave. 
Uh, but if you don't have to leave and you can stay, we are an open church. By that, I mean that we don't require that you have to be a member of our church only to take communion. But we do stress and we feel it's biblical that you be a member of the body of Christ, that you've made the Lord your Savior, your Redeemer. Because otherwise, uh, it has no importance. We also ask that you reverently stay in a spirit of worship for now. Please no talking. Paul's going to play some music that's been prepared to play. And, uh, and uh, let me read. I've got so much going on in my mind. My blessed hope is...